All right. Good evening, my friends, family, the fellow bride, the bride of Christ, the body of Christ Jesus, everybody who's saved, who's been born again, who believes. Hey, guys, a great thing for you to do is don't trust in you or uh, hope in you or think that you're doing enough to get you to heaven, okay? That is an abomination to God. You can never do good enough. You can't keep the law good enough to go to heaven because the requirement in heaven is being perfect. You must be absolutely without sin, without flaw, without mistakes to go to heaven. And that leaves us all out. And that makes our default hell. But Jesus Christ, I'd want us going to hell, guys. But everybody is going. Everybody's default is hell. And that's why he brought us the wonderful, wonderful, wonderful good news of Jesus Christ, the gospel. And God left heaven and came here to earth to die for us, to make it all happen, to, to count us as righteous, as perfect, because he, at your belief in what he did for you, infuses you with his own personal righteousness. Now, do you think God's allowed in heaven? Yes. And the only way you're going to be allowed into heaven is to be infused with his perfected righteousness. And how is one, how does that happen? You believe. You believe that God came here to die for sinners. He traded places with sinners. So if we would believe in his death, burial, and resurrection, and that he poured out all of his blood that paid the price, without the shedding of blood, there could be no forgiveness or redemption. And he did that. What he's waiting on now, he took care of the sin issue. He's waiting on you to believe that. From the depths of your heart. I mean, we're talking real belief. You either believe something or you don't, or you can kind of, well, the quarter is still flipping in the air. I don't know if it's heads or tail. That's not salvation. Salvation is when this becomes what you know to be true. This is your belief, and not only as an intellectual fact-gathering deal, the devil has all the facts. The devil knows that God left heaven, became a man, lived 33 and a half perfect years. He hated Jesus the whole time. He's the one that led the men to kill him when Jesus was 33 and a half years old. Whipped him, tore him apart. Satan loved the torture he was going through. He believed every bit of it. He knows who Jesus is. The devils, remember while Jesus was doing his ministry, the devil said, we know who you are. Have you come to torment us before our time? And Jesus said, shut up, man. Don't be bowing down to me. This ain't time to be bowing down to me. Get up. Remember all that? The devils believe and they're scared to death. They believe every bit of the salvation plan. They believe that Jesus is the very son of God because they knew him in heaven. They knew the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in heaven, and they rebelled. They know the facts, Jack, but they ain't going to heaven. You got to take your belief beyond satanic belief in intellectual fact-gathering, and you need to apply it to yourself. Believe. I believe that I'm a sinner on my way to hell. That is my default and the default of every human being, the son of Adam and Eve, the daughter of Adam and Eve. I believe we are imperfect and we cannot go to heaven. Our default is hell. I also believe that God loves us so much and wants us in heaven. But the only requirement is perfection. That makes it impossible for us. With man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So he came down here. He became a man, the perfect man, to die to trade places in our stead with imperfect people, us. And he died on that cross. He was buried in the ground dead. He was dead and buried for three days. And he rose from that grave with everlasting righteousness, with everlasting life, with everlasting hope. And if we place our faith in him, not just facts, you can't place your facts in him. You place your faith. That means you apply it to yourself. You believe for you. I believe Jesus did this for me. And whosoever believeth in him shall not have to perish in hell, but can go to heaven, everlasting life. Because the moment you believe, you truly say, okay, this is for me. I believe this for me. I believe I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. This is for me. 
Jesus infuses you with his righteousness. The Holy Spirit of God comes inside you and seals himself in until the day of resurrection, the day of redemption, the day of the rapture. So do you know with 100% guarantee in writing that you're going to heaven when you die? You got to believe the story the preacher just preached to you. And it doesn't have to go that long. The short of it is this. Do you believe that God left heaven, came to earth as a man, lived 33 and a half perfect years until he voluntarily died on a cross after being beaten, whipped, tortured, betrayed by two of his best friends, two of his disciples, man. Okay? And then he died on that cross. He was taken bound, down by two more of his friends. They cleaned him up, washed him, prepared him, put him in that grave, and he stayed there for three days until he rose from the dead. And he did all that to conquer death, to conquer hell, to conquer sin, to conquer darkness, to conquer night. So you didn't have to live in those things. You could be freed from those things. You could be saved from those things. Do you believe that? We encourage you to believe that. And whosoever believeth in him shall not perish in hell, but they shall have everlasting life. 1 Corinthians, write this down. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. That is the gospel of Paul. That is how you're saved right now before the rapture. We want you saved. Get saved. If you're watching this after the rapture, you need to believe everything that we've just said. Place yourself in that story by faith. And then call on the name of Jesus. You name him Jesus, Yeshua of Nazareth. You are my Savior. You're the only one. And then continue on until the moment you die in faith without being ashamed of him. That's your requirement on the other side of the rapture. On this side, place yourself in the story and believe Jesus died for me. Amen. I believe it. Hallelujah. Uh. Heather's put up a Bible verse here, James 2.19. Hey, you believe that there's one God? Awesome. That's, a, that's great. You got to start there. But the devils believe that and they're scared to death. They're trembling. So you got to have more than an intellectual fact-gathering knowledge of this. You need to place your faith in Jesus Christ. My eternal existence depends upon the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ alone. I believe with my whole heart. Boom, that's it. When do you unbelieve that? We don't, man. I'm telling you, people always want to talk about, oh, and guys, this salvation that Jesus brings, you, you cannot. It's impossible for you to lose this salvation. It's impossible, once you believe, for you to be lost and on your way to hell. You can never be hellbound again once you believe because Jesus loves you like that. And Heather has it up here. Before the rapture, you believe in Jesus Christ of Nazareth, his death, burial, and resurrection to be eternally saved. And after the rapture, you must confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe without shame. Praise God. Josh is here. Josh is our countdown man. He's our calendar dude. 76 days left in the year. 76. That's the year the Bible code, the computer program was released. They had been working on it, working on it, working on it, and boom, it was done, and they started producing their first codes in 76. I like that number. 76 days left in the year, guys. And then it becomes the new year. The first day of the first month, they call it Nisan 1. Okay? The Bible doesn't call it that. The Bible calls it Abib 1 or the first day of the first month. Okay? Hey, Jenny, God bless you. Amen. And the Bible codes are so vital, guys. The Bible codes are everything. God and his love. H have you looked over the book yet? They put up a, the link here every night in these Bible codes, in the, these Bible code preaching sermons that, that we do. And the link is to the book that Sean Mitchell has completed. It's called Bible Codes Unsealed. Download that. Just click that link. It's free. Download that book and come to understand everything. And what this book is, it's referred to in the Bible. In the plain text, it's called the little book. Ezekiel had the little book. John the Apostle had the little book. And it's also called the seven thunders. And John, after hearing the seven thunders, was about to write them. And God said, no, those are going to be sealed up until later, till, till the end of days. 
and now they've been unsealed over the last 10 years. God has called a man by the name of Sean Mitchell to open up these thunders. And boy, they've been revealed. Now, only six of these seven thunders have been revealed. He will reveal. He is the Moses and the Elijah character in Revelation chapter 11. And we studied those Bible codes last night. And he discovered Bible codes in just one chapter, Revelation chapter 11. That's the one about the two witnesses, the two olive trees, the two lampstands, he and the other guy. And boom, we covered that last night. We encourage you to uh, watch last night. You can do it right here on Facebook. You can go to YouTube, our YouTube channel. And uh, Vondo puts those up every night for us, man. So Heather's got the link here, Bible Codes Unsealed, Weebly.com, uh, 463 published codes, 777 pages in that thing. God's divine numeral system, numeric system. <clears throat> he loves us. Good evening, Jonathan. God bless you. I'm going to grab me some water, guys. Just put a new filter in there and it's squeaking. All right. I love you. So make sure you're saved. And then after you're saved, make sure you're growing in the Lord. Come to know him, guys. That's why we offer these Bible codes every night. Just look at that. When you download it, there's a section called translation or the code translation. Read that thing. That is the very word of God. Those are the words that John saw in heaven. Those are the words that Ezekiel ate. Amen. And he ate them, and they were sweet in his mouth, just like John, and bitter in his belly. Amen. Because the Word of God is like that. And it talks about the judgment of God and what's going to happen, and the bad news, and the beast, and the devil, and the people who are deceived by him, and get the mark of the beast, and you're commanded, don't get the mark of the beast. And all these Bible codes will clarify. Guys, if you want to know salvation, if you want to know God's heart, if you want to know all the details to the things in the plain text that you're you know, not sure of, and so many people are confused about throughout all these denominations, this Bible code clears it up for everybody. God gives us in these last days His take. His word in His dialect is what He calls these Bible codes. The plain text is God's word in our dialect. The Bible code is God's word in His dialect because it, it skips on such amazing precision high-powered numbers, okay? And it's just incredible how you look at it. Now, Sean sent me some information here. I mean, just as we went on and even after we got here about a guy who was hand-counting them. He was born 120 years ago this year. And he died young. He, he suffered greatly uh, during World War II. He escaped from a train. He was headed to Auschwitz. And he was ready to die, man. And he had snuck inside a loaf of bread a saw. And he sawed that wooden train car. And he jumped out. And his whole people, he, he, he went into a massive depression because his whole town, his whole people, the Slovak, Slovakia, they were all destroyed. And he got to escape and... He lost his wife and the kids and everything, and it just broke his heart. He finally ended up in Switzerland, and from Switzerland, he came to New York City, and that's where he died at the age of 57 because his heart was so bad for so long. And he had five more kids with his second wife, and uh, so that, that's where it went. Let's, I'm going to try to find his name here for you. Uh, and he, he did it all without a computer, and... I gotta find this note, man. Just forgive my having to search this. Uh, the letter count of the book of Esther, guys, how, how many characters are in the book of Esther? Are 12,111, okay? And that's, that's an important number to have, 12, 11, and one. And uh, there, Glazerson and others are discovering codes. They're very weak codes. They're not real codes but they have some true terms in them. And they're all looking for the Messiah to come in 2024. 5784. That's what they're finding over and over and over. And this guy was part of that, and he, he found codes way back before the computer. 
and he was counting them and uh, developing codes. And but you know, like I said, these guys doing doing this up, they don't even have Jesus Christ in them. They're very weak tables, but they have some true truth in there. And Sean could take that truth and make it make it a godly table. You know what I'm saying? Those facts about Elijah and Moses. That's what they see here. Elijah and Moses are going to show themselves in the year of the Messiah. Now, they're going to see the fake Messiah. They're going to go for the Antichrist. They're going to go for the guy who brings peace, man, because there's going to be utter destruction on the East Coast. Jew after Jew after Jew, Muslim, Christian, whatever, by name, no, no true believers are going to be killed. All the true believers are going to be raptured just before this event. The night of the rapture, the East Coast of the United States will be wiped out and tens of millions will be killed. And they'll all go straight to hell that night. And so these guys are talking about the Messiah coming in 2024, 5784, on their calendar. Their calendar is 210 years off, and we know about that because we study these Bible codes. Guys, if you want to have the knowledge of truth, you've got to understand these Bible codes. And the problem is not too many people want truth right now. They don't care nothing about truth. Just like Pilate. Jesus talked to him about truth. And Pilate said, what is truth? Who cares about truth? Power is what you want. And people in power lie. Truthful people are the ones who's picked on, beat around, messed with. All their friends leave them because their friends believe the lie. And be ready for that. Heather says, I see 111 and 12111 all the time. Knowing 1211 is in Esther is so awesome. We're going home soon, guys. All oh, glory to God. Right there. And so Sean was sharing this with me. These guys were finding this stuff. And they're seeing um, the Messiah in their Bible codes. Messiah's coming. And it says he's going to come with judgment because... Of the, the land, the Jews are evil. They have not repented. They have not followed what God says. They have not gone after his character and his word. And they mention over and over homosexuality. Homosexuality. It's bad because it's not what God created. And so they're talking about all this stuff. And they themselves are unbelievers. They themselves are hellbound. But that's what we're praying for. As soon as the rapture happens, we're going to go to heaven. And right after that, I don't know how many hours or days... Sean and the other guy are going to come right back down and they're going to be talking to all these rabbis, man, and sharing with them the true Bible codes from heaven. Amen? And what that skip really means. The guy was born 100, 120 years ago and he died on November 29th. That's, that's a big number among us. At 929, the 1129, because 29 is 11. There's your 11 again, Heather. Okay. November 29 is 11 11. Remember us going through all that? Uh, Tyvon says, I had a dream of a mini sized tsunami, and all these men built these deep, deep hole and poured um, lava into it and punished themselves for their sins. Pretty weird. People want to do that. Sounds Catholic, sounds Buddhist, sounds Hindu, and people want to hurt themselves and pay for their own sins through penance. And guys, you're still wicked. You cannot go to heaven. You're not perfect. And you slap Jesus in the face, man, because he did it all. He's done the work. He's completed the work. He started the work. He completed the work. He said, it is finished. When Jesus says it is finished, you don't go beyond that and try to add to his work. That is an abomination. That makes you a heretic. If you tell that story, if you teach others to add to their salvation or to tell them they can lose it, you cannot lose your salvation. If you have not been once saved, always saved, you're lost and you're hellbound right now. Only Jesus can save you, and it's only through belief, man. Um, Sean says that this guy's life points to 1976. That's when the Bible code was published. So people could start making Bible codes. Now, it was only done in the Torah. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. But they were still doing codes. I mean, they're legit codes, right? What are we finding out? One chapter is loaded with codes. And then you go to the second chapter and the third chapter and do all the single chapters. Then you do a single book. Then you can add all five books. It's amazing. 
God's storyboard is incredible, man. And so, uh, let's see here. October 25th, 1903, I guess that's when he was born, to Friday when he died, uh, the 29th of 1957. It's 19,760 days from the time he was born to the time he died, or 54 years, one month, one day is including the end date. Or, uh, I said 57, he died in 57. He was only 54 years old when he died. That was my mother's age when she died. So, yeah, these numbers are right there, man. And this guy, God uses his rabbis. God uses his people through through that decades. Remember Kaduri? Rabbi Kaduri? 100 and whatever he was. What was he, guys? 106 when he died? And he was Kabbalah. He was satanic. He was, but he kept wanting to know the truth. He desired to know the truth. He didn't know it. And he said, I want to know who the Messiah is. And he began to search and research. And that was his heart and that was his truth. And God, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, came to him in his dreams and revealed to him, I'm your Savior. You know, and however deep the conversation went, he didn't talk much about it. But he left a note at his dying. It was to be opened a year, a year after his death because they believe in the Kabuji. Uh, he didn't want his soul, his afterlife to be messed with. If they mess with your afterlife within a year, well, you can be messed with. But after a year, they believe your afterlife is sealed. Okay. It's all hocus pocus and satanic kabuti, but God revealed his truth to him. And he left us an acrostic saying it was Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the Messiah. And boy, he had 250,000 followers and that stirred him up. And uh, several of them, I'd say many, I don't know what that means in comparison, but many of his disciples are being saved and have been saved and have believed when they heard him call out the Messiah's name, Yeshua, and their deep disciples, their students, and they're understanding all this stuff. Um, so these guys were counting them, hand counting them way back. They were hand counting them back in the 1200s. They, they couldn't go this high, but this guy went high, dude. Counting this stuff out, 12,111, 12,111. And when they, they found it out, they found out, you know, the Messiah is coming, da, 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 right there next to Esther, which to us means what? Purim? The last month, Adar? Find all that stuff there? And guys, when is, let's see here. I may have left that window up. Passover this year to, on the Jewish calendar, on the satanic calendar, is Monday, April 22nd. So that's when they're expecting to do all their stuff. And they're wanting to slaughter that red heifer, guys. They're wanting to slaughter that red heifer. And all they got to do is get the okay to do it. They've got the altar made. The altar is erected, that big lean-to, that big old white ramp ready to slaughter the red heifers on. And they have to be, two of them, have to be slaughtered by June or they'll be too old. So it looks like they're going to really narrow this thing down and go for it. And they're going to let them do it because it's all Satanism, guys. The Muslims are Satan and Kabbalah are Satan. The Zionists, they're all Satanists. They're all on the same team. They're acting like two different sides, just like the Republicans and Democrats, but they're on the same team for the same purpose, for directing all the cattle straight to the slaughter with that 666 implant, missing the rapture, first of all. They want everybody to miss the rapture. They don't want you saved. They want you continuing in your default. Religion is fine. They don't care if you're Muslim, if you're Zionist, if you're Kabbalah, if you're Jew, if you're Christian, as long as you don't place your faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ and, and are born again, they don't care nothing about that. You just keep doing what you're doing, religion. Go, go, go. Brent says, I drove to Kentucky and seen a license plate said 77-666. He took a pic of it. Amen. Cush says, Passover 2024 begins sundown uh, on Monday, April 22nd, and ends the evening. That's that whole week of Passover, the week of unleavened bread. Amen. Thank you for that note, bro. So it starts on the 22nd, that is the 14th of Nisan, and then it continues on for that, that eight days, 
Okay, very good. Thank you for that. And for most of the Jews. All right, so they're wrong on their calendar, but when they start talking Passover, and we're going to see the, uh, we're going to meet our Messiah at Passover, that's what they're talking about. Not our real dates, Passover. Their dates is what they're talking about. So we're keeping an eye on that, and we know that uh, Purim is two months from today, today and tomorrow. It was a two-day event on the 14th and the 15th of Adar, all right? And the true Adar this year is the 13th month. There are two Adars. The first one is a filler, and then the second Adar is the real one with the real events, with the real uh, roll of the dice and all that. <clears throat> and Adar 2 begins April 23rd, the real calendar, okay? So they're calling Passover what we know to be Adar. Okay, I want you to understand this. Their Passover begins the 22nd, and our Adar, the true Adar, Purim, begins April 23rd. Make those notes, people. They're going inside. So we're going to see God do some things, but they're on the wrong date. They're calling it the wrong <clears throat> appointed time. And that's what God told him. I hate your appointed times. I hate your feast. I hate your holidays. I hate your celebrations. Because they were all on the wrong calendar and they had the wrong attitude when they were doing them. Guys, that's why, is God the same yesterday, today, and forever? Well, then he's angry when you won't go on his calendar and you won't honor and uh, reverence his real days, especially after they've been discovered, after he's revealed them to us. The Bible codes and stellarium in the sky, the clock in the sky. That's what he created on the fourth day of creation, he gave us the sun, moon, and stars as signals. And then time frames, years, months, days, celebrations. Okay? And so we know that. So Heather's got those notes here, guys. Look at them. Write them down on your own piece of paper in your notebook right in front of you. Cush has given us the whole week of unleavened bread. The whole week of what they call Passover. Unleavened bread begins with Passover. And then unleavened bread's the next day, the 15th of Nisan. The 17th of Nisan is the day Jesus rose from the dead, the Feast of first fruits. You got his death, burial, and resurrection right there in the 14th, 15th, and 17th days of the first month, what they call Nisan right now. And their calendar is 44 to 45 days to fast. And what they're calling Passover, God's calling Purim. Okay, note, 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 uh, God's calling Adar, okay, Purim's another 14th, uh, half a month away, two weeks away, okay, so, but Purim begins, what is Purim? Purim is when Queen Esther and all the Jews got to defend themselves and, and they were saved from Haman, Barack Obama, the spirit of Antichrist, Haman, is Barack Obama's great, 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 great granddaddy, like Moses is Sean's great, 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 great granddaddy. And here we are down to this ultimate fight here at the end. The two witnesses versus the two beasts. And the two beasts think they overcome them and win and da-da-da, and all of a sudden they race from the dead and they go up, and three and a half years later they're going to be sitting right on horseback right next to Jesus. Brock going to look at him in the face and say, what? And it'll be all over for him. Done. Your thousand-year rulership just lasted three and a half years. Sorry about that, buddy. Done. And he really didn't even get started because he wanted all of Jerusalem for himself there. And that's what the Battle of Armageddon is. Seven years from now. And Jesus comes back and ruins their day. They're coming to steal the booty, take all the, take all the goods, the gold, the silver, the gas, the oil, everything. And Jesus says, no, 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 that's mine. And kills them all. Boom. And that's where we are. So, guys, these Bible codes are everything. These Bible codes are everything. They told us what's going to happen the night of the rapture. We didn't know any of that in the plain text. We didn't know that the Russians were going to nuke the East Coast with a Poseidon tsunami bomb or two or three. Plural. But now we do. Everybody else is preaching that uh, Putin and the Russians are Antichrist. And you and I know that he's just a servant of the Antichrist. And the Antichrist is a black dude from the USA. Barack Obama, 
who originally came from Indonesia and Hawaii and Hawaii, Kenya. You guys know that every time he says he's from Hawaii, he's not lying. There's a Hawaii, Kenya is where he's from. The guy's a liar, but he's got to cover himself in truth because of Kabuti. Because of karma. They believe in karma. And so they tell truth through lies to tell the truth. They tell a different side of the story with some of the facts. And they believe that will save them from the karma. Well, Jesus don't believe in karma. He's going to come kill them all. He doesn't respect your karma. He doesn't believe in your karma. And he's coming to wipe you out, man. So that was some great notes that Sean just fired off to me. I was like, man, that's incredible, dude. This is amazing. And so I went to study the guy for a little bit just before coming on here. And uh, very interesting. It sort of sounds like it may be Purim again when the two witnesses are murdered, giving of gifts. Maybe they'll just give gifts because they are glad they have been wiped out, killed, murdered. Right. Silent. Yeah, that's what Obama's going to attempt to silence him. If I can cut their heads off, their mouths won't move. And he's going to be so angry, and finally he gets to kill him. he's going to be rejoicing. And then they only stay dead for three and a half days, and then he, his party's ruined again. And Satan comes down, and he's furious because he is locked down on Earth. He cannot move to the other planets. He cannot move to outer space. Right now, Satan is the prince of the power of the air. And he is the God of the second heaven. The second heaven is where our stars and our planets and wandering stars and comets and asteroids are all located. And God's going to shut him down. It's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. And so he's just going to live a, a three and a half year period of just fury where he's furious because he's a diva. And he's going to be just so furious. I was told of a story here in town. Every, everybody knows the story. But we got this ho mo who lives here. His dad was a rich millionaire, ran the newspaper and all this stuff. And so the son is just a flaming flamer. And they were at a party. He had a party at his place. And so everybody was there. They had all been there for an hour. And then he makes this grand entrance from upstairs. And he's walking down, dressed up in his boa and his diva outfit and all this jazz. And all the focus is on him, you know, like Lucifer. And he comes down and one of his high heels breaks. And he trips and he comes falling down the stairs. Boom, 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 boom. And as soon as he landed, he stands up and orders everybody cussing, cursing. Get the out of my house. Get, go, get gone. That is the exact personality of Satan. He is a diva and he can't get anything right and it all goes wrong for him. And the only way he knows how to deal with it was through anger and fury and judging and murder and bloodletting and killing and death. That's how he operates now. And that's how he'll operate, especially when he's trapped on earth, man. And when I heard that story and a, a, a homosexual guy that was at the party told me about it. 20 years ago, told my brother about it, and they were they worked together. And then my brother told me the news, but everybody was talking about it. It was hilarious. They had just gotten to the party. Now the, the guy's kicking him out. That's how Satan is. And he doesn't love you. He hates you. He hates you so much, he wants you to get that mark of the beast in your skin, under your skin. And we're told all about that in these Bible codes. Learn these Bible codes. Learn the facts. Learn the details. Please learn them for your own sake, man. This is God talking to you. This is God sharing his heart with you. And it's only for the people of the end times. That means you're at the end. Exclamation point. You're at the end. Know what God expects of you here. And serve him. Walk with him. Uh, read that Bible. 10 to 20 chapters every day. The plain text. We encourage you to do that. Hey, let's look at some old Bible codes. What do you say? Oh, man, let's go. Where are we going to start tonight? Let's see here. Boom, boom, boom. Boy. Okay, we did Aleister Crawley last night. Aleister Crawley. Aleister Crawley is Barbara Bush's daddy. Okay. 
Where did Barbara Bush and her husband live for years? Houston, Texas. Where does her son, where did he live for years? He lived in the Dallas area and he owned the baseball team there. Okay, baseball guy, baseball guy. Texas is their home state. They love that single star. They love that five-pointed star. Okay? They both received their 33rd degrees, their 32nd degrees, right there at the Waco Temple. That is the main temple in the state of Texas. And both Dad Bush and Son Bush, reserve, res, they got their 30 seconds there. Okay? You get your 33rd in Washington, D.C., the devil's capital. Okay? And so that's where they got those. But you go online. So you can go online right now and look at the University of Texas. Okay, all you people that, oh, Texas is so great. Now, this is all about George and George and Barbara and their daddy slash granddaddy. And you go look where Alistair Crawley's memorabilia is, his estate they have built a special section at the University of Texas right there in Austin. You know where Austin City Limits is and all these bands come into play? Highly charged satanic hellhole. And Aleister Crowley stuff is right there at the University of Texas, Austin. And who built it? Son-in-law and grandson. And the rest of them, y'all. Satanic. Understand this, man. This... This country has never been for the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Okay? And so we're going to look at one here tonight. Let's go ahead and get that posted for you. I'm going to copy that dude. Bring up our church service. Renew it. Got to refresh that thing so it works. Man, I, I, love, I love having these Bible codes. I love Sean Mitchell being our friend, guys. Our brother. Our, our humble brother who just wants to share the heart of the Lord Jesus Christ with us every day, every night. And uh, you and I are blessed by that, okay? All right, we're going to put this up here right now. And it won't let me for some reason. All right, here we go. Let me know when you see it, guys. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Sean. God bless you, says Cush. Amen. Amen. All right. That link should be up right now. We're going to look at George Soros. God hates this guy. God hates this guy. Hungarian. Let's just read a little bit about him, some of his, some of his facts. George Soros. This is from Wikipedia. Uh, Hungarian... Um, American billionaire, hedge fund manager, and philanthropist. As of October 2023, he had a net worth of $6.7 billion. That's because he gives it all away to Satanists, to satanic organizations, to abortionists. Okay? So his personal worth, quote unquote, what the bank says he has, is $6.7 billion. And he donates more than $32,000 to the Open Society Foundations, of which $15 billion has already been distributed, representing 64% of his original fortune. And so he just gives to the devil, gives to the devil, gives to the devil for the devil's cause. So he can stay on top. Okay. He's real old and he's about to die. And he's about to go straight to hell. And he'll be seeing his buddy David Rockefeller there and the rest of them. Amen. Those chemtrails gagging me. They're bad, bro. They've really cranked them up. They've cranked them up because they've got to hide this. This Nibiru is so big, guys. The seven planets coming in, the moons, they're all starting to be seen. That second sun, that's going to be hard to hide here shortly. And so they've they got to pour on the chemtrails. They're doing several layers of things with that. Um, they have many depths to their reasons why they do things. It's cover up and then to kill you at the same time. Okay? They've got to get these... Uh, toxins in you, these heavy metals, neurotoxins. And then when they turn on that 6G, that 5G and that 6G, dude, it's over, bro. And that whole 6G has everything to do with controlling everybody's minds and the masses with the mark of the beast, being a beehive mind with one Barack Obama and who's indwelt by Satan. So everybody's going to have the satanic Luciferian mindset. AI, that's already what that is. Have nothing to do with AI, guys. Okay? Amen. Don't communicate with them. Don't talk to them. 
Uh, he was born, this George Soros, satanic guy, August 12th in 1930. He's 93 years old right now in Budapest, Hungary. And then it talks again about his net worth, who his spouse are, is, who his children are, and so forth. So let's look at that Bible code. God, God hates this guy, okay? God cannot stand this idiot. Here's what it says. Uh, let me. It says, in another table concerning America, the writing is on the wall from Daniel. This time, it's the life of George Soros. The Bible code has every human being who's ever lived in it. It's the book of life. It's the Lamb's book of life. It's the book of judgment. This book will be opened at the judgment seat of Christ with every work that you've done in it. And Jesus knows right where those codes are. Does his name appear? And also at the great white throne judgment where everybody's going to be damned and doomed to hell because of their own wickedness. They're going to be judged according to the things they did in their body. And the things they did in their body was according to their own flesh, their lust, their desires. And they hated Jesus Christ. And they refused to believe in his finished work for them. So all those people get to go to hell because that's their default. They're going there anyway. God didn't send them there. God came here to earth to keep them from going there. I want you to believe. Uh, heavy metal music was named for a reason in the 80s. Death from the Prince of the Air. That's it, man. That's it. And to get everybody doing this. Oh, no, that's Texas. Not at the University of Texas, it ain't. That's Aleister Crawley. That, that is paying homage to the devil. Both hands, both hands. Oh, no, it's Texas Longhorns. Right. You better wake up, stupid. Okay? Heather says, I bet Nibiru will be seen during the eclipse. Probably will be. It probably will be. And they're probably going to try to make everywhere it's going to go black uh, just chemtrailed out. They're going to put aluminum, tons of aluminum. Uh, how thick does aluminum foil ho-ho wrapper have to be before you can't see through it? Not thick at all, very thin. So they may lay some uh, heavy metals down, aluminum, aluminum, aluminum to keep it from being seen. Okay. Oh, it was stormy today. It was cloudy today. Uh, and all you're going to experience is the blackness. Many folks probably won't be able to see the sun be oculated by the moon. But we'll see. Because dear, dear in that eclipse... Everything, all the stars, the comets, everything will shine at, on, in a regular one. So these guys manipulate everything, and we'll just see what God does. I pray that, hey, Lord, don't let them manipulate it where I'm at, where I'm looking, because it's coming right over my head right here in Jonesboro, Arkansas. And uh, so I want to see everything that God has for us, man. And with God, all things are possible. Amen. Amen. He answers prayer. So this is the book of life, the Lamb's book of life, and the book of judgment. And the books were open. Everybody's life is in here, man. God knows right where it is. And if he adds a couple more books that are mentioned in Scripture, it'll be the ultimate Bible code book. And then we're going to have the Bible room. And I'm like, Lord, 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 Lord. I would love, I would love to be the welcoming guy in that room. That'd be so cool. Come on in, guys. Grab a good seat. Today we're going to watch Sennacherib's army get wiped out by one angel. You're going to love this. All right, and just whatever the story is that night for eternity, man. I would love that. That would be so great. All right, here's the code. Uh, the skip is 85,881. 85,881. And it says this. From the UN is this devil, George Soros. H have God's story about you, what he knows your heart to be, to be a good one. Amen. I heard something real bad is going to happen at Easter. Yeah, Easter. If you celebrate Easter, that's real bad, folks. Do not celebrate. Guys, don't you dare. Now, you listen to me. This is the truth from the prophet of God coming to you. We're all prophets of God, right? God's, he saved a whole, when he saved us, you became a prophet and a priest and soon to be a king. Okay. What is prophecy? Prophecy is forth telling the scriptures, knowing the heart of God, the mind of God in the scriptures, the spirit of truth. Okay? Don't you dare go to your church that Sunday. 
instead of buying pastels and the cute little shoes for the daughters and all that stuff, don't go to church that day if your church is celebrating Easter. You stay home in glory to the Lord, in honor of the Lord, in respect of Him. Okay? I'm telling you, man. Do not do it. The bad thing that's going to happen on Easter is Easter. All right. And the worship leader to warn us up. Amen. Warm us up. Amen. Ishtar ritual. That's, that's all Easter is, guys. Satan worship. All right. Let's see what God says about this idiot. George Soros. From the United Nations, from the UN, is this devil George Soros to take the money. Perverse in his ways, your foreigner that is within your gates, and they'll proceed toward Sodom. What that means is, is his goal the whole time he's been at this philanthropy thing is to turn us more and more and more into Sodom and Gomorrah. Has it worked? Sure it has. To where they're sucking face and undressing each other as women on daytime soap operas. That is full-blown Sodom and Gomorrah. God is sick of it, man. You're going to take them right toward Sodom. Perversion, destruction in you, America. In you, United Nations. From the United Nations to you, America. You embracers of this wickedness. That includes Easter, guys. I'm telling you. I am telling you. If you have any kind of sense about you in the truth, in Fearing God, do not attend a church that is going to celebrate Easter, a sunrise service facing the east. Do you know how satanic that is in the Bible? Ezekiel 8. Read it slowly. But that's the... I just get the warm and fuzzies. Oh. Yeah, God didn't. God's angry. He is angry. And they'll proceed towards Sodom. Perversion, destruction is in you. Desolation of the USA. Sufficient signs of the end. Now, we had this Bible code nearly six years ago. Uh, over six years ago. Yeah. February 28th, 2018. Talking about the destruction of the USA, and we didn't know at the time it was a tsunami bomb by the Russians. Now we do, and it still fits this from six years ago, last month. Devastation is coming. Okay, my wife and I had a conversation today. She said, why did God tell Jeremiah, don't pray for this people, dude. I'm coming to kill them. Why would he say that? Because his mercy had run out. 120 years earlier, they saw what happened to their sister up north, Israel, Samaria, Ephraim, she sinned and sinned and sinned, and, and she never would come down and visit the temple. They hated God up there. And so God came in and judged them 120 years earlier. They were wiped out and disbanded across the globe. Judah saw that and didn't repent. Judah saw that and didn't change. And she asked, so why did God have him go to Nineveh? He said, don't, don't pray for Jerusalem. Don't pray for southern Israel, but he said to go pray and to go preach to Nineveh, who's the Gentiles, because they didn't have a warning for 120 years before that. Israel was judged because of their wickedness. Judah saw it and continued in the wickedness and said, and she became worse than her sister up in the north because she had the temples, she had the preachers, she had the prophets, and she was worse than them. And God looks at Jeremiah and says, quit praying for him because I have sent my judgment on Judah. That's the same thing he's done for New York City and the United States of America and all these stupid preachers still praying, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves. You idiot. God has already told us that he's going to destroy this place and don't pray for it. Now, you can pray for individuals but you ain't going to get your prayer answered concerning New York City. You ain't going to get your prayer answered concerning your state and your country and your Republican guy that you're choosing. 
God's coming to kill them all, man. And he's already told us that in the Bible code. And you don't go against the Bible code, man. You don't go against God. And so that's why he tells Jeremiah to quit praying for this people, this nation. And why did God say, go to Nineveh, Jonah, and cry out against that city and tell them they got 40 days? Because he wanted to give them mercy. And he told Jonah that, I'm going to be merciful. What happened 120 years later? Nahum comes along and says, y'all better repent. And they wouldn't. And so God kills Nineveh with a flood. You guys see it? God comes with warning. And after the warning has been rejected, 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 he looks at his prophet and says, you tell these people to quit praying for New York City, to quit praying for the United States, to quit praying for their blessed ship to come in. Because it ain't. You better start listening to the men of God, folks. Amen. You in the Bible library room, we get home. Amen. Amen. Starting us out with, with worship. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, pray according to Jehovah's will. Never pray against his plans and his purpose. Read the Bible. Read the Bible code. That's why we tell you every night, read the Bible code. Because he says in the Bible code, I'm coming to destroy it. And he told us how he's going to do it. And just, you know, a few of us, I don't know, less than 20 probably right now. And our faithful will join us later from other countries and other time zones. <laughs> Listen to God. Do what he says, man. And he says, desolation for the USA, sufficient signs, man. And then he gives us Daniel 526. That's a pretty good number. To 28. This is the interpretation of the thing. Many, many tinkle you for sin. Many. God has numbered your kingdom and finished it, United States of America. That's, this, this verse is found right here in this table. What does that first part say? Meaning, this is the interpretation of the thing. God has numbered your kingdom and it's done, man. Quit praying for it, you stupid pastors. You just want to keep living on your fun and your, your fellowship and your food and your picture taken. And your blessings from the Lord. God's sick of it. Tickle, you've been weighed in the balance, dude, and you lack. You don't even add up. And you're found wanting. Perez, thy kingdom is divided. God's coming to destroy this place. Because Satan's plan is to have oneness. Not a bunch of nations, but a united nation. Amen. All right, let's look at another one. Click to the left of that picture. Praise God, man. And here we are talking about the European Union, the oneness. They are the power. America goes down. Listen to me, man. America goes down. The judgment has already been declared. And the power will go back to Europe. And they'll begin to rise with their euro, their money, their things, because Rome is in Europe. Hello? NATO? European countries. And who just joined them? Sweden. Giving them 32 nations. Sweden just joined this week. Making them 32. This thing's about done, guys. Heather says, I saw a picture of Soros and Zelensky beside each other. They look related. Sick, satanic bloodlines. Joe says, I don't know why me, but I'm also thankful to the Lord saved me and his mercy and his grace to be a part of this family, to know the Lord, to know his word, to know the codes. Amen. To know this one, Sean Mitchell. Amen, dude. I'm afraid to blow this thing up because I always miss it. I'm 32. That's scary. <laughs> 32 is a good number if you're in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's bad when you're in the Freemasons. Amen? Amen. What does this code say? And we'll call it a night, man. I appreciate you guys tagging along. I appreciate us worshiping together. I appreciate us believing together and being steadfast together, unmovable together, always abounding in the work of the Lord together because we know that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. That's why we do this every night. Here's what Sean says from March 6, 2018. The European Union revealed in the Peshitta, that's the 
um, Aramaic New Testament. Okay, and that's where these New Testament Bible codes are found in the Aramaic text. He says, I'll be posting more codes from the Peshitta in the future, and he sure has since then. This is six years ago. Uh, concerning prophecy as well. And this, today's what, March 7, March 8? This was done on March 6th, six years ago. Revelation 16, 2. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell noisome, grievous sore upon the men that had the mark of the beast, and upon them that worshipped his image. And here's what the code says. Listen to what God says. This is his word and his dialect in the Aramaic. Aramaic was the everyday language that Jesus spoke in his household. That's what Mary and Joseph spoke and his seven siblings and his disciples. They spoke Aramaic. Down at the temple, they spoke Hebrew. When they had opened up the text, they were reading Hebrew. Or some would be reading the Greek text. Okay? Because that northern Israel had been Greekized. They'd been Hellenized. And so they had what they called the Septuagint. The Septuagint is the Bible written in Greek. So they had the Greek form, the Hebrew form of the Bible. When the New Testament come along, they were speaking Aramaic at that time since they came back from Babylon. They were in captivity in Babylon and learned Aramaic and lost their mother tongue, their main tongue of Hebrew. And so they spoke Aramaic. Boom. And so that's why uh, when they came back into the country 100 years ago, they said, we're only going to speak Hebrew. We're speaking Hebrew, 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 so our kids can learn Hebrew. We can get our language back. And that was a miracle in itself. Here's what the code says, God's word in his dialect concerning the European Union. The skip is 149,669. 149,669, and it's going from the bottom to the top. It's negative. Okay? The code says this. God says this. A religion is the European Union. They will be corrupted. A thorn in my flesh was given me. That's the mark of the beast. Everybody who gets this mark of the beast will understand they have been double-crossed and they can't undo it. A thorn in my flesh was given to me. It, it was a messenger of Satan to torment me. Those who worship him with a spirit of sorcery, she is destroyed. You were lost. Let us fear. To roam is a sign of the judgment. Yah, that's Jesus, Jehovah. Yah struck them. Woe, a religion of destruction. Confound, give vengeance. Now, God has warned us already, don't get this mark of the beast. You and I who are saved, born again, we will never even be around for that. We're going to be raptured three and a half years before it's implemented. And they're going to be told you can't buy or sell, you can't trade, you can't get your baby's food or diapers without this mark. And people are going to be fearful and unbelieve what God has said. And that's why he makes note that they're going to be the first two occupants of hell when he judges. The fearful and the unbelieving. We need to believe him now. And if you won't believe him now, believe him on the other side of the rapture. And do not get this mark of the beast. If you get this mark of the beast, you're hell bound. You cannot undo it. And you will have been warned by Sean and the other guy. You will have been warned by the 144,000 preachers. You will have been warned by the angel preaching the everlasting gospel just before this mark is implemented. That angel is going to tell every human being on earth, everybody will have heard this message. Do not get this mark of the beast or you'll be hell bound. So there's not going to be somebody who just gets it by accident because they're going to have to pay homage. They're going to have to kneel down, worship Barack Obama, worship Satan inside of Barack Obama, love the 666. They'll get a mark 666 or an eyeball, a tattoo on themselves. That's a mark of the beast with this uh, marker, genetic marker of the beast. You, you'll be able to see these people from a distance. Okay. And they're going to pay homage to his name. 666, they're going to know what they're doing, okay? And so it says, a religion is this European Union. Don't think that it's just some politics. Don't think that the politics of the United States is politics. It's religion. And we've been telling you, it's a homosexual death cult. That's what the United States is. That's what our government is. A homosexual death cult. Why are you voting for these people? 
Why do you think that one of them's on your side in the age of deception? When God said he is going to turn you over to the deception because you don't love his truth. And his truth is they're all wicked. Why are you voting for one of them? Why do you think one of them is going to save the day? Why are you putting your trust in man when God told you in the very middle verse of the entire Bible? Psalm 118.8. Don't put your trust in man. You put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. The very middle verse of the Bible. It's better to trust in God than to put your confidence in men. And all these people, all these Christians so-called, they just love it. It's all of them, Cush says. It's all of them. They really believe somehow that all these delegates and Trump get pulling it out. Boy, he's going to do it. He's going to save the day. He's a mega witch. You see where the shirt says mega? That's the highest level of witch in witchcraft is a mega witch. And he's putting everybody as a mega witch under a mega witch spell incantation, a stirring under the umbrella of red, as in the red horse, the war horse. This guy's bringing you war, stupid, not peace. He claims he's bringing peace and oh, America, America, America. He's bringing you war and bloodshed, stupid. Amen, brother. Preach on. Amen. Quick question. How will mute people be saved in the trib? Their heart. God hears their heart. Amen. God, here's the cry of our hearts, man. And some people say, oh, Jesus, save me. And they won't believe it. Remember what we said. You got to believe on the front end and then call out and not be ashamed. There's going to be a bunch of these false prophets who cry, Jesus, save me, Jesus, Jesus. And they're going to be hollering out to their uh, kaleidoscope Jesus. Oh, what's her name, honey? The kaleidoscope Jesus broad that just come out with that song? Dangle, Dangle, Lord Dangle. She just came out with a song called Kaleidoscope Jesus. Wrong Jesus. Do you guys know, do you guys understand that she is a witch on purpose, infiltrated the Christian music scene to get everybody's eyes off of Jesus of Nazareth unto Kaleidoscope Jesus. He's whatever you want him to be. He's different shades. He's different colors. I, I thought I had him understood here, but then, then I didn't. And then, yeah, Lord Lauren Dangle. Dangle. I call her Dangle. She's dangling right over hell right now. But she is a full-blown witch who's infiltrated the Christian church who doesn't read their Bible. And those that don't read their Bible is going to be cool with kaleidoscope Jesus. But I know Jesus. Jesus of Nazareth, the God of heaven, and he ain't cool with kaleidoscope Jesus. He knows him to be a psychedelic devil, man. These people are so dumb. So yeah, Tyvon, God, here's our hearts. It's belief. They got you got to believe. That's where God first hears the cry is when you believe it in your heart and then you call on his name. They, they sign language, man. They can say, Jesus, Jesus. That's calling on his name in, in their language, sign language. Amen. Good question, dude. All right. So these guys are a religion. They will be corrupted. That's with that mark of the beast. A thorn in my flesh was given to me the mark of the beast, a messenger of Satan to torment me, those who worship him with the spirit of sorcery. She is destroyed. The European Union will be wiped out just like America. America goes first, then the European Union, and then your 10 kings rule with Obama, and that's going to be the Muslim nations. Everybody tracking along the Mideastern? They're the new America. They're the new, oh, God bless the Muslims. And God's slowly going to come wipe them all out, man. And God says this. He's going to wipe this bunch out. Uh, those who worship him with the spirit of sorcery, she is destroyed. The European Union. You were lost. The European Union. Let us fear. They, they, they fear Rome. They, they, they fear the Pope. They, they fear the Vatican. They, they fear the Ten Commandments of Satan. George Guidestones, that's what they're going to respect. To Rome is a sign of judgment. God, Yah, struck them. Woe, and remember, we see that. That's one of the uh, bold judgments. Everybody who gets the, um, the mark of the beast, they're going to get boils. They're going to backfire on them. That battery, it's inside of them, is going to not agree with their skin, not agree with their psyche and their 
blood flow and their electricity and it's going to double cross them. They're all going to get boils. And instead of worshiping God, they're going to curse him because they can't worship him anymore. They're, they're cursing and their anger just gets worse and worse and worse. It's a thorn in their side. It's a thorn in their hand or in their forehead. It's a thorn. And God's going to bring a woe upon them. Yah struck them. Woe, a religion of destruction. Confound. Give vengeance, God. Give vengeance. Vengeance is his. He will repay, says the Lord. Amen? All right, why don't we pray? I praise God for you. I praise God for these codes. I praise God for Sean. I praise God for you guys, man. Man. Praise God. Let's pray. Lord, we're so appreciative of these men way back who are counting the numbers, who are counting your characters, who are finding codes by hand. I'm glad you put that in, man. And uh, thank you for these codes that we have. I thank you that these guys are on their mission and they're finding wrong codes with right things in them. And it's going to be cool seeing Sean straighten that mess out and letting them know they were looking for love in all the wrong places. And I just uh, thank you for being the God of love, Lord, for the God of mercy, the God of truth, the God of power and might. And we worship you and you alone, Jesus. You are God. And uh, I just pray you'll bring this Lauren Daigle down, man. Just smash her and her people. Crush them. And may the whole Christian world see it just before the rapture. That would be great. And a whole bunch of them just like her at these Christian music awards. I pray you'll bring the house down like you did at Dagon's worship service. That'd be awesome to see. That'd be a wonderful thing to rejoice in. And we know that you have the power to do that. And we're just here, humble servants, praying, will you please do that? Get these thorns out of our side. And may your truth prevail, Lord. Thank you for the small remnant, the small group of believers who trust in you, in your word, in your dialect. Bless them. Bless us with more of your word and your dialect. May we be ready to receive it. Prepare our hearts. Break up the hard, fallow ground and make it soft, ready for the seeds to be planted and to germinate within us, bearing fruit for you. And uh, we just pray for Sean that you'll have your hand on him, give him all the rest that he needs and the, supply his uh, body with the nutrients that he needs. We pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. Man, I love you guys. Amen, says George. Good to see you, bro. Thank you, Lord. Amen, Lila. Amen. God bless, Cush. Adrian. Amen. I love you guys. By his grace, we will see you again here tomorrow night. Heather, in Jesus' holy name, amen.